Bruchem Aboyim. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our home. Um, tonight, this week, we are about to enter into the holiest time of the year. I thought that it would be only appropriate on my thoughts to examine the concept of going out to battle in Judaism, both on a physical level and also on a spiritual one. You know, the fifth book of the Torah, in the portion of Kiseitse, it begins with the words, Kiseitse la melchama al oivecha, when you go out to battle against your enemy. The Torah, as an instruction manual, always teaches us practical advice. These opening words tell us an important lesson. Always take the battle to your enemy. Don't wait for them to come to you. If the war is fought on your land, well, whether you win or whether you lose, you lose. Your cities are destroyed in the ensuing battles. And we can attest to the truth of these words by looking at both Syria and the Ukraine. The wording of the verse is stated in the singular to tell us that in order for the children of Israel to be successful in battle, they must be united as if they were one person. After all, there is power in unity. And the previous Torah portion of Mishpatim ended with the Hebrew words, Ketase Hashem, when you will do that which is proper in the eyes of God. This connects with the opening words of the portion of Kisese that states, when you go out to battle. The success of the Jewish army in battle is totally dependent on their connection with God Almighty, their Father in Heaven. You know, they tell a story about a Jewish cadet who was attending West Point Military Academy. He was enrolled in a class on military strategy. The instructor examined many of the great battles that occurred in history, not just modern warfare. Actually, he went back all the way to Alexander the Great and the battles that he fought. The Jewish cadet raised his hand and asked the instructor a question. Why was it that he had never studied the Jews and their military victories? Well, the general told the cadet to come see him after the class in his office. When the cadet came to see the general, the general explained to him that the class was based on military strategies, famous battles that could be traced back as far as the Greeks and Alexander the Great. However, when studying the battles that the Jewish nation fought, their successes were not predicated on military strategies. See, their, stra their, their victories were miraculous. The general said, we don't teach miracles here at West Point. This cadet became a Bog Shuba and returned to his Jewish heritage. The verse begins with the words, when you go out to war, war la milchama, to the battle, not la milchama, to a battle. The prefix la, meaning la, the, meaning, pardon me, the, tells us that the Torah is not referring to war and battles in general. The Urchaim HaKadosh states that this prefix indicates, la, that this verse is referring to a specific war and constant battle that we must wage daily against our Yetzirah, against our evil inclination. God says that even though your evil inclination is stronger than you are, Due to the many sins that you have transgressed, still, do not be afraid, since God Almighty is always with you wherever you, wherever you, whenever you decide to do tshuva. Repent. Just like he took your ancestors out of Egypt, though they lacked any merit, so too will God Almighty help you to succeed in overcoming the influence of your evil inclination. When we look into the Torah, we come to the realization that the battle against our evil inclination in reality is an uphill struggle. The Torah states clearly in the portion of Noah that man was created ra min arif, evil from birth. In addition, our sages tell us that a child does not receive their yitzatov, their good inclination, until they reach the age of 12 for a girl and 13 for a boy. God Almighty wants us to recognize that without his assistance, there is no way that we can overcome our evil inclination, what we refer to as siyata dishmaya, the help of heaven. So the words ram and arab, evil from birth, can also be interpreted in a different way. You see, we have a belief that we are all gilgulim, 
uh, old souls that we have lived at least two previous lifetimes. Based on that belief, it may well be that this world is a prison, a correctional institution, a place where we are all serving sentences for transgressions that we violated in our previous incarnations. Our mission in this lifetime is to tikkun ha'olam, repair the damage that was done to our spiritual beings during, during, doing due to our many sins. We are commanded by God Almighty to direct our lives on the path of Torah and mitzvot. All of this with the hope that we will retain an elevated place in the world to come. You know, the Shalah HaKadosh stated that by one subduing their evil inclination, they have attained the possibility of turning all of their sins into mitzvot, into good deeds. Reb Mordechai Gifter stated on the Hebrew word in the evening, in the opening verse, Oivacha, your enemy, stated in the plural tense, and then the next word in the verse is, Unasano, and he, God, will deliver him, stated in a singular tense, that this connects to the Talmud and the Tractate of Sukkot, which speaks of the evil inclination having seven names, i.e., seven methods that it uses to subjugate a person. So when a person battles against their evil inclination, it may seem to them that they are fighting against many enemies. But when they are successful in subduing one urge, another arises and demands attention. In the end, if and when they are successful against their evil inclination, they come to realize that they only had one enemy, and it is only with si'ata deshmaya, with the help of heaven, that your enemy is delivered into your hand. Trust in God Almighty is essential for any success, but a person cannot leave this battle totally in God's hands. One must be an active participant. One must exhibit strength both physically as well as spiritually. As it states in Pirkeovos, the Ethics of the Fathers, Ben Zoma said, Ezehu Gibor, who is a strong individual? He answers, Hakovish es Yitzro, one who subdues their evil inclination. Somehow, whenever we face a challenge or difficulty in our lives, we feel that the problem was caused by someone or something else. We find it difficult to accept the responsibility and to admit that we may have created the problem. We need to change something in our lives. Whenever a problem arises, first and foremost, we must first look into ourselves and accept our culpability. You know, we read in the Torah that Moshe was confronted by Korah and his rebellion, that the first thing that Moshe did was to fall on his face. But why? Before he reacted to Korah's accusation, Moshe first needed to ascertain whether Korah was a messenger of God or was he acting on his own selfish desires and ego? So once Moshe concluded that Korach's rebellion was personal, well, then he acted accordingly. You know, when you point one finger at another person, you are, in reality, pointing three fingers at yourself. So was the case with Korach and his rebellion. If God Almighty is our benevolent Father, so the question becomes, then why did he create the evil inclination? Why place a stumbling block in our path that can cause us to sin? We read in the Torah that when Bilaam, the prophet of the nations, was on his way to curse the children of Israel, he was confronted by an angel of God with a drawn sword on the road. Rashi there states that the angel was the Sutton, and Rashi refers to him as an angel of mercy. Everything that God Almighty does in this world, he does for our benefit. It is the Sutton, Satan, who allows us to receive and appreciate our reward for the challenges that we overcome in our daily lives. He is many times the driver of the vehicle that transports us as we ride on the road to paradise. You know, there's a blessing that we recite whenever we eat any food other than bread, cake, wine, or the seven species that the land of Israel is known for. It is called the Borei Nefashot the creator of numerous souls. The blessing reads, Baruch HaTo Hashem, blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, Borei Nefoshot Rabot, 
who has created many different souls. The Chesronan al Kalmashavarasa, and each person is created with a deficiency, meaning that each of us is addicted to something in this world. We all face some challenge in our life. But why? So that everyone's life will have more meaning. Blessed is he who gives life, true life, to the world. God Almighty created every human being with an imperfection. He expects us to be partners with him in this world. Just like we were born with the physical foreskin that we are commanded to remove, so too are we created with the spiritual foreskin that covers our heart, one that we must remove. We are all created with certain challenges that we must address in our personalities. You know, there's no greater joy in life than controlling an addiction, one that has dominated your life. It is the struggles that we face in our lives that make us human. It also creates a compassion for other individuals who are facing similar challenges. We need to fight the battle against our evil inclination, but we do not have to fight that battle alone. It's an interesting fact that when two Jews have a problem and they join together to battle their evil inclination, they have the power to succeed. Since there are two good inclinations who are battling against one evil inclination. Well, it sounds good, however, it's not really realistic. After all, if you have two people, then they each have an evil inclination as well as a good inclination. So how can we say that it is two good inclinations against one evil inclination? The answer is really very logical. My evil inclination is only concerned about me. It does not care about you at all. It is selfish and self-centered. Whereas my good inclination actually cares not only about me, but it sincerely cares about you as well. So when two Jews join together in harmony, they possess the strength to overpower the single evil inclination that they oppose. Much like a physical battle, again, there is strength in unity. So too in our spiritual battle against our addictions, when we unite as one, there is no challenge that we cannot overcome. We always need to remember that we did not succumb to our addictions and desires overnight. It was a process. And so, too, overcoming our challenges should be done one step at a time. You know, few of us have the strength of character to stop our addictions cold turkey. We need to acknowledge the power of our evil inclination. In reality, it knows us better than we know ourselves. In truth, without the help of God, our Father in Heaven, few of us would be able to survive the war. The Talmud in the Tractate of Sanhedrin tells us about the, about the incident that occurred with Governor Melech, King David, in Bathsheba. The Talmud states that David asked God to be placed on the same spiritual level as the forefathers, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, in our prayers. God replied that the forefathers had earned their title by being tested. Well, David said to God, then test me. God agreed to his request and even told him that the test would concern a sexual temptation. The Talmud states, Aver caught in yesh ba'adam that there is a small organ that exists in the body, that the more you feed it, the hungrier it becomes, whereas the less that you feed it, the more is sated. The reference here is to the male organ. The more the one indulges it, the stronger is its cravings. On the other hand, the less the one indulges it, the weaker is its cravings. The same can be said of all other types of physical indulgences and addictions. So David Melch erred. He reasoned that the best way for him to overcome his evil inclination was to increase the number of times that he would have relations with his wives. He thought that it would re reduce his sexual appetite. However, to the contrary, had he restrained himself, he might not have felt such a strong desire for Bathsheba. David Melch fought many battles and won, but the one battle that he lost was against the most formidable of enemies, his own evil inclination. 
There's a great lesson that we learned from David Amala, King David. When he was approached by Nassan an Navi, Nassan the prophet, Nathan, concerning his relations with Bathsheba, his only reply was, Chotosi, I have sinned, nothing else. I believe that David's test was not whether he would succumb to his evil inclination or not. Rather, God orchestrated the scenario so that he would fail. I believe that David's real test was, what would he do or say when he would be confronted with the sin? He could have presented reasons and excuses for his actions. Instead, he acknowledged his guilt and only said one word, chatasi. We need to learn from his example. If you err in any way, the only reply is, I acknowledge that I have sinned. Nothing else works. You know, I once heard a statement made in the name of the Rambam, Maimonides, that the pleasures of this world are compared to a fire. If you're too far away, well, the fire is useless. If you get too close, the fire will burn you. So the prudent thing to do is to find the sweet spot and enjoy its heat. However, the problem is, as stated by the Rambam, that we keep inching our way forward, trying to achieve even more pleasure until we eventually burn ourselves, or what we would call in modern-day terminology, an overdose. We need to acknowledge the power of our evil inclination and pick our battles carefully. You know, there was a soldier who was returning from the war, and an old man greeted him. He told the young soldier, you have just left the little war. Now you must enter into the much larger war, the daily battle that we all must wage against our evil inclination. So it's right around Yom Hadin, right around the Day of Judgment. We're going to pray. You know, prayer is an acronym from, for the words, please respond after you examine the request. Let us hope and pray that God Almighty will help, help us in our quest to attain true tshuva, repentance, this year. May God Almighty bless you and yours with all that is good. Remember, to pray for others, not just for yourself and your family. Pray especially for the Shekhinah, the divinity of God, that it be allowed to return from the long exile that it has spent with the children of Israel in the Galut. Pray that Mashiach Zikinu should come quickly, and help to usher the world into a time of peace and tranquility. Again, let me thank you all for listening to my lectures. It's greatly appreciated. Wishing you all a Ksiva Chasima Tova. May you and yours be written and inscribed for a good and special year. Um, for the next few weeks, again, because of the holidays, I won't be giving any classes. But if you get a chance before, again, next week of the Aster Shemei Tshuva, the 10 Days of Repentance, there's a lecture you'll find on my website, on YouTube, on uh, Spotify, and it's called Practical Tips on the Holiday. It may help you again during the 10 days and in the, the day of Yom Kippur as well to find your way closer to God and hopefully to find true acceptance for the prayers. Again, it's a time that the world needs it more than ever. Um, again, let me bless you all with a, a good year and a sweet year. Again, and thank you so much for listening. Shabbat Shalom, and again, Lashonatova, Musuka, you should all have a sweet and a happy year. Thank you so much for listening.